Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 12 of the chapter States of Matter. In the previous video, I introduced Avogadro's law to you and I explained the law. Before I come to solving the problems based on Avogadro's law, there are two more things that I would like to tell you. One is where is Avogadro's law useful to scientists or how when you're uh, carrying out experiments in the laboratory or if you're trying to carry out certain reactions in industries, what is the ratio in which you would use the reactants and what is the amount of product that is desired and for that desired amount of product, how much of gaseous reactants would you need under what conditions that can be judged using these gas laws. So let us just take an example of this one reaction where hydrogen gas combines with chlorine gas to give you hydrogen chloride gas. For this reaction, if we see the molecules, we know that one molecule of hydrogen gas combines with one molecule of chlorine gas to give you two molecules of hydrogen chloride. If you change this one molecule, one molecule is a specific number, so which means in terms of number, the ratio is 1 is to 1 is to 2. That is, one molecule of hydrogen combines with one molecule of chlorine to give you two molecules of HCl. And what is a mole? A mole is a certain quantity, a certain number. And that number is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23, which is known as the Avogadro's number or Avogadro's constant, which is the number of molecules present in one mole of a substance. So we can say that one mole, since that number is fixed and the ratio is fixed in terms of number, if we have one mole of hydrogen, it would combine with one mole of chlorine and it would result in the formation of two moles of HCl, right? Because if one molecule, one molecule gives us two molecules, then one mole, one mole should give us two moles of HCl. This is one thing that we understand from the Avogadro's law too. Another thing is that if we talk in terms of volume, because Avogadro's law states that equal volumes of all gases at the same temperature and pressure contain equal number of molecules. So this ratio at a certain temperature and pressure, the ratio should not only be in terms of number of moles or number of molecules, since we are taking gases, it's not possible to count the number of molecules. But finding out the volume of uh, the substance, the volume of a gas is easier, filling up a balloon or an inflatable uh, jar, or rather we should say a jar which has a, uh, what, a frictionless piston, in that you can measure the volume and get your desired volume of a gas. So this ratio should be applicable in terms of volume too. That is, if you have one volume of hydrogen, since same number of molecules at the same temperature and pressure, conditions would have the same uh, number of molecules, would have the same volume. Therefore, one volume of hydrogen or one liter of hydrogen should combine with one liter of chlorine to give you two liters of HCl. So if you want to get two liters of HCl, you need to take one liter of hydrogen and one liter, uh, you want to get two liters of this, you have to take one liter of hydrogen, one liter of chlorine to get two liters of HCl gas. So this is also the application of the Avogadro's law that our knowledge, how do we practically use it in industry and, or when we are preparing things or in the laboratory when we are carrying out reactions in small quantities. Having understood that, there is another thing that you have to keep in mind when you're solving the numerical problems based on Avogadro's law. That is, what is the mathematical relationship that we would be using most in uh, this law? Just as in Charles' law and Boyle's law we had this relationship, we know in Avogadro's law, volume is directly proportional to number of moles. So the relationship or V is equal to K4N is what we had solved. So the relationship that we would be using would be V1 upon N1, since V upon N is constant, it should be equal to V2 upon N2. So this is the relation that we would be using in our numerical problems right where n stands for the number of moles so if we have been given the quantity in some other terms that is in grams or uh, a, or a certain number of moles we need to count the number of moles of the uh, substance of the gas before and after 
Having understood this, let us now start solving the numerical problems. So let's come to the first problem. If 2.5 moles of a gas occupies a volume of 50 liters at a certain temperature, what volume will 3 moles of it occupy? So what are the variables we are looking for? Out of these four variables, we will be given three variables in the question and the fourth one will have to be calculated in this mathematical equation. So let us do it. If 2.5 mole, so we say V1, we are looking for V1, we are looking for N1, we are looking for V2 and we are looking for N2. We have 2.5 mole, which means N1 is 2.5 mole of a gas occupies a volume of 50 liters, which means V1 is 50 liters at a certain temperature. Pressure, of course, is constant. What volume will 3 moles, now we have 3 moles, 3.0 mole, of it occupy? Now, we need to find out V2. So, using the relationship V1 upon N1 is equal to V2 upon N2, we are looking for V2. So, if we keep V2 here and we take N2 up here, we get V2 would be equal to V1 upon N1 into N2. Right? So, substituting the values, we get V1 is 50 liters upon N1 is 2.5 mole into 3.0 mole is N2. Now, mole and mole will get cancelled. And if you calculate this, you will get how much? This would be equal to 60 liters. V2 would be equal to 60 liters. So this is your answer. Moving on to the next problem. A 250 ml balloon contains 0.45 moles of oxygen gas. If 0.5 mole, 45 moles of oxygen were added to it, what would the new volume be? Now, we are again looking for V1, N1, V2, N2, the four variables. And which one has to be found and which three are given to us? A 250 ml balloon, so 250 ml is V1, contains 0 0.45 mole, so that's N1. If 0 0.45 moles of oxygen were added to it, it means you originally had 0 0.45 moles, you added another 0 0.45 moles to it. So what would you get? 0 0.N2 is 0 0.45 plus 0 0.45, which is equal to 0 0.90 mole. So N2 is 0 0.9 mole now. Do you get this? And V2 is asked as here. So we'll use the same relationship. V2 would be equal to V1 upon N1 into N2, right? Substituting the values, we'll get V1 is 250 ml upon 0 0.45 mole into 0 0.9 mole. Mole and mole get cancelled, right? And what we, we get from this 250 upon 0 0.45 into this, we get 500 ml. Another thing, when you, whenever you solve a problem, whenever you get your result, you must always try to verify if according to the law your answer is correct. The Avogadro's law says that when volume increases, number of moles also increase. What was your volume 1? When volume 1 was 250 ml and number of moles was 0 0.45. In N2, the number of moles have become double. So volume should also become double logically and we find from this calculation that the volume has also doubled. So this shows that the law, um, we plugged in the right values and our answer is correct. You can always verify your answer using the theory of the law. And this is applicable, you can do this with all the, the numerical problems of all the laws that you do. So let us now move on to a couple more problems. Give me a minute. Okay. So here is question number three. A 90 liter flexible container holds 3.5 moles of a gas. How many moles of gas should be removed to decrease the volume of the container to 40 liters? Again, looking for the variables, 
We are looking for V1. We are looking for M1. We are looking for V2 and M2. Right? 90 liters is V1. Flexible container holds 3.5 moles. So 3.5 moles is N1. And how many moles of gas should be removed to decrease the volume of the container to? So the volume V2 is decreasing to 40 liters. Right? And N2 is to be found out. Now the equation is V1, relation is V1 upon N1 is equal to V2 upon N2. And we are looking for N2. In order to get N2, take N2 to this side, V1 here and N1 here. So they go in the opposite sides across the uh, sign of equal uh, to. So we get N2 from this. N2 would be equal to V2. We take N2 here. So if we take N2 here, we get V2. Bring V1 here. So upon V1 and bring N1 here into N1. Right? The relation would now be N2 would be equal to V2 upon V1 into N1. So N1 goes up, V1 goes down and N2 goes up here. So that's how you get this relation. Now N2, substitute the values. So what would N2 be equal to? We get V2 is 40 liters divided by N1 is, sorry, V1 is 90 liters and multiplied by 3.5 mole right the liters and the liters will get cancelled we are looking for number of moles so the answer we should get in moles so that also gives us an idea that we have substituted the right quantities and when you solve this the answer you get is 1.56 moles 1.56 moles right again how would you verify it the volume is going down so number of moles should also go down volume is getting down from 90 to 40 so number of moles should also go down we had 3.5 moles and in the answer we get 1.56 moles which shows that the Avogadro's law is applicable and it's just the answer that we've got is right the last question you have inflated a balloon to 22.4 liters exactly with oxygen which weighs 32 grams. We know 32 grams, we've been given grams now. And the law, the relationship that we use here, N stands for number of moles. So if we've been given grams, we'll have to convert it into moles. If you continue to add oxygen to it till it reached a volume of 34.6 liters, that is V2, how many grams of gas would it now contain? Now, the first thing is we must find out N2. What are we given and what are we supposed to find out? And then finally, the answer that he wants from us is not in terms of number of moles. He wants us to give the answer in terms of grams. So we will first get the number of moles and then we'll convert the number of moles to grams. So let us solve this. What is V1? What is N1? What is V2 and N2? We are looking for these four variables. Okay, you have an inflated balloon to 22.4 liters, right? Exactly with oxygen which weighs 32 grams. Now, what is number of moles? How do you calculate number of moles? The mass, now 32 grams is mass. Mass upon molar mass gives you the number of moles. The mass given to us is 32 grams divided by the molar mass is 32 for oxygen is grams per mole right so what do you get from this the number of moles is 32 32 goes away the grams and grams goes away mole comes up here so we get one mole and one is one mole now if you continue to add oxygen to it till it reached a volume of 34.6 liters 34.6 liters is v2 and N2 is to be found out, right? Now, if N2 is to be found out, let me just rub this side so that I can solve it on this side. We we'll use the space here. Now, we are looking for N2. We know V1 upon N1 is equal to V2 upon N2. And we are looking for N2. So, again, the N2 will come here. So, N2 
N2 would be equal to V2 upon V1. This goes down here and N1 goes up here. So you get into N1. Right? Now substitute the values. You have V2 is 34.6 liters. V1 given to us is 22.4 liters. And number of moles is 1 mole. Right? So the liter and liter will get cancelled. And when you solve this, what is the number of moles that you would get? You will get 1.54 moles. So now you've obtained the number of moles, but the question is that uh, till it reached a volume of 34.6 liters, how many grams of gas would it now contain? What will be the weight of the gas present in the balloon? We know that one mole of oxygen weighs 32 grams. So whatever is the number of moles, if you multiply it by its molar mass, you will get the number of grams. So molar mass, mass in grams is equal to molar mass into number of moles. So we write what is the molar mass of oxygen? It is 32. And what is the number of moles that we've calculated? It is 1.54 moles. And this is grams. So when you solve this, this comes to be equal to 49 point 49.28 grams is the mass of these many moles. The mass of one mole is 32 grams. So the mass of 1.54 moles will be 32 into 1.54 and we get our answer in grams. So now the balloon would weigh how much? 49.28 grams. So these were a few numerical problems based on Avogadro's law. If you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. Uh, subscribe to my channel, share the videos with your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.